say, what do you do if you have a water damaged laptop? Well, the first thing I do is I make sure I pull out the battery and I don't even try to power the laptop on. Pull the battery out, don't hit the power button, and get ready to take the whole thing apart because we're going to inspect the motherboard and see if there's any moisture or liquid still on the motherboard. So I'm starting to take some components out. We want to get to motherboard level here. If you suspect there's any liquid in the motherboard at all, do not power the computer on, pull the battery out, take it all apart, and look at the motherboard in every little crevice of the motherboard. That's what we're going to do, and that's what I recommend on water damaged laptops of any sort. Don't power them on even when the customer comes in. Don't let the customer power them on when it's in your shop because you know they brought it in because it was damaged because of the water, and it can't get any better if they're sitting there trying to charge it with power. So. We're going to take the screws out of this. On a Toshiba laptop, you can take screws out and be somewhat reckless knowing that there's holes um, where the screws go. And next to each hole where you're taking the screws out of, there's a little label indicator telling you what size screw goes in that hole. So it makes it easy for us to put them back together. I'm losing a little bit of magnetic touch on my screwdriver there, otherwise it would come pulling right out. Okay, when you're sure you got all the screws out of the bottom, I'm going to flip it over and look at the top. And the first thing I'm going to do is get that hinge cover plate off. And it's different on every laptop. Some laptops don't even have this hinge cover plate. But this is the key to getting the keyboard and the screen off. And that's what we want to do. Gently, if you have to, put some pressure on the sides there and try to pull it up. Okay, it took me a little while, but I finally figured out the way to get this up. Now, since we have all the screws out from the bottom of the computer, we know there's no screws holding this plate in. Just pop it up. Now let's look for water damage here right on the spot. And usually, guys, on a water damaged keyboard, there's little hope for them. If keys aren't working after you spill water in them, I would look at just getting a new keyboard. Let's detach the ribbon cable from the keyboard here. And let's take a look. What do we see? Okay, there's this one circuit board here, which has the power button and LEDs and other quick launch buttons on it. Let's get that off. That appears to be attached by a cable, ribbon cable. pull that out. We're going to inspect that. And we're actually going to see that there's water damage right there along one of the buttons. So we definitely want to get that cleaned up, that corrosion. See that white? That's from the liquid. What I do to get rid of that is trusty teeth brush and some hand sanitizer. I just put a little bit on the end of the toothbrush and run it out here of hand sanitizer, but we'll just squeeze a couple drops on there. Or just stick the toothbrush in the bottle. <laughs> you don't want to use too much because you want it to evaporate. You don't want any more moisture on these circuit boards. And you just wipe it off. Clean it off real good. And just brush that corrosion away. 
Now we're also going to see the edge of the keyboard has a little bit of water damage as well. So at least we know where the water was going. And we could see that it hit the bottom left hand corner of the keyboard. So this might be a good indicator of to help us find out if there's any damage under that section. Is there, if there's motherboard under there or what, we could check it out and make sure there's no damage there. So I'm going to inspect that section there. I'm going to clean up any little spots that I could see. So what I'm going to do is pull up that corner there and get a flashlight, shoot it in there, see if you see any spots of corrosion. We might not have to take the whole computer apart to get this one done. I'm going to spray some compressed air in there, blow out anything we can. We're going to grab the toothbrush. And because I, I do see little pieces, spots of corrosion there, I'm going to clean it up right there. It's not a lot, though. And make sure you scrub all in that area and all around that area. You want to make sure you get any spots that are corroded cleaned up. And then look all around that area, with shine a light in there if you have to. Or if you do have to get the whole computer apart to check out the motherboard, go ahead and do that. Okay, to continue to inspect here and just see if you see any other spots. If you do, hit them with that toothbrush and the hand sanitizer. Don't overdo it. Like I said, you don't want globs of the hand sanitizer on there. You want something that's going to evaporate fast. So just a film would be fine. And look at as many spots on this motherboard as you can. See if you see any white, any corrosion. And when you're confident you have everything, you can start putting the computer back together. Make sure that the case is snapped together. And just look for any spots, right under the keyboard especially, where you think water might have gotten in. You can look around the wireless card and wireless antenna, and just be, be as thorough as you can. It's pretty much the main rule. Now also with this computer, uh, the customer said that the CD drive is also reported as being a little flaky. It's not responding sometimes, sometimes it is. Um, I have the drive pulled out there. I'm going to use a paper clip to open it since it's out. I have no power going to it. So you just put a paper clip in that little hole on the side, and that's how you open them up. I'm going to just take a look on the inside there. See if I see anything. I always like to just hit it with some compressed air on a CD drive on both the connector. Make sure it's clean and the laser, make sure it's clean. Open it up, make sure that it's sliding along the rails properly. Then I like to look inside the computer at where the drive actually connects to the motherboard. See, there might be even some corrosion there. Well, those are just some tips on how to treat a water damaged laptop. Never turn it on, take it apart immediately. It's probably preferable to take the whole thing apart to get every piece of the motherboard and make sure that there's no corrosion left. Anything you can clean up, clean up. Make sure there's no short circuits happening and just do your best to be as thorough as you can. This way you feel like you, can do, you did everything you could do for the customer. And one last thing you could check is inside connectors, like inside the LCD connector. See if there's any water that's seeped in there that's causing a problem and any other connectors that you can. Anyway, there's a few tips. Thanks for watching.